Hello everybody, welcome to Parkour3D.art and today we're going to be covering ah, the knife tool. So the knife tool is a very versatile uh, tool in Maya because you are able to do multiple things with it and I'm going to show you some of those uh, tricks and techniques. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to show the first aspect. I'm going to make a cube. And the first aspect is being able to generate uh, geometry. Shift, right click, then I go to the nine o'clock option. You also have the tool inside of Mesh Tools in here. Multicut. There might be a shortcut in here. It's not, I might have changed it with something else by accident, but usually it's uh, Control Shift K, I think. But you can also find it inside of the hammer in here, multi-cut tool. So you've got multiple places. Usually I just like to go like that, all right? So um, the way that the interface works is make sure that you're always rotating around the scene and you are able to see the angle that you're doing anything. And it's gonna show you wherever you draw around the face, it's gonna pick the nearest vertice with a yellow, with a yellow dot and an orange line, okay? Or if you go on an edge, it's gonna show you red like this. So if you go on the face, you can go click, click, click like that. And then maybe I'm just gonna click on that, for example. And in order to finish that cutting command, you can then right click. So here I'm gonna say, okay, I've done that. I'm gonna finish it, right click. And now it has created that geometry. So I can do that again, go, point, point, and then maybe here in the middle for whatever reason, and then point again, right click, and then I can go here in the edge, drag, you see how there's a percentage. If you use uh, shift, you can do that intervals as well, if you want to be accurate, click, 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 right click, and that's essentially how you can generate uh, geometry. The other cool thing is that you can also use the knife tool to delete uh, some edges. So for example, if I don't like this edge there for whatever reason, just by hovering it when it's red, you can press the delete button, just like that. And that's something that not a lot of people do know. Huh? Now, let's say that, all right, what is another versatile option? about the knife tool is that you can hold down the control button. So the control button essentially enables you to have some additional settings. Here with the snap setting, this is by default 10, so let's put that by default. And so say that we hold down the, uh, let's say that we hold down the control button. And this is now the edge loop function, right? So it enables you to add an edge loop just by holding down control, which is really cool. But if you want to be really fast in making sure that that edge loop is actually cut right in the middle, you can hold down control and middle mouse while in the tool you can go like this, boom, boom, boom. And you can add edge loops really quickly like this, right? Just by holding down the middle mouse button. Okay, so that's a very quick way to add a manual subdivision to some places just by holding down the middle mouse button like that. You can become, like if people see you do that, they're gonna think like you're a super pro. They're gonna go, whoa, how many decades of my have you done? Oh, I just started learning it yesterday, you know? So that's one cool thing. The next part uh, that I wanted to, to show, so let's delete all this funky stuff here. Okay. Um, is to be able to use this like a like like a sauce map, right? So you just slice in this cube like a cheese, of, uh, like a piece of cheese. Uh, by default, this option here. So let's reset this to make sure that's everything by default. So if you want to make a cut, you can just go in here and just drag a line like this from the viewport from one point to another. And it's going to make a slice in the middle of the geometry, right? So you can do something like this, right? Uh, but you can also be a bit more specific. So if for, for whatever reason, you want to make sure that you're slicing this right in the middle. So let's go front view. Like that. You can hold, you can use the grid as a mean to, to be more specific by holding down X 
and it's gonna snap to the grid. And so I can go in here, click once, and then click again, and then it's gonna generate that cut right in the middle, right? You might be thinking, okay, but why do we need this for a cube? You could have just done this very easily by doing this and it would be fine, right? You don't need to do it this way. Uh, say that you've got a model that's a little bit more complicated. Um, let's uh, go very quickly instead of the counter browser and let's select a, a face, right? So you might have geometry that is not perfect or it's not ideal for the scenario. I'm gonna simplify the grid for this purpose. So I'm just gonna do 100 units, 100 units with one subdivision, just for this. Actually, 50 might work better. And so I'm just gonna use this in order to go from the here to here. But I'm gonna use now a different option for the knife tool. So if you click here, go to tool settings here. I think I just dragged this window in here, but you can find it in here as well. You're gonna have this option here that says delete phases. And what's really cool about this is that depending on the direction that you are cutting, it will delete one side. So this is very cool if you want to do a little bit of mirroring. So if you want to like mirror delete and then you want to duplicate everything across. So I'm gonna go on that checkbox. I'm gonna go here, hold down X to snap on the grid. Click here, click there. And then you see here how you've got like free, like some yellow dots. So that means that's gonna re delete the right side of the mesh. Just like that, right? If you don't use the, the grid, you can just go like that and just slide it across. I think there is a extract faces mode as well. So if you go like that, it will actually do a little bit of a slice. So it looks like you're cutting a melon. And so you can also say, okay, slice along this plane. Or you can also say, okay, how much you want that to move. So if you want to say three centimeters, then it will actually slice three centimeters, right? So if you want to give it the effect that uh, something's being destroyed, then you can do it this way as well, right? Which is really cool. It looks like a, well, talking about a horror film. Um, that's very interesting too, especially with destruction, right? Anyways, there's one last thing uh, that I'd like to cover because I'm already in the eight minute in this video, and that is being able to use edge flow, right? But edge flow is not gonna work very well unless there is uh, some geometry that's already been generated. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. I'm just gonna create an insert edge. But let's say that I want to make sure that it follows the curvature of that a bit better, right? So the way that edge flow works is if you have that checkbox on, and I go in the middle, and I click on it, it's gonna essentially, you see, it's gonna try to emulate, okay, so that curvature, that will be like yay, right? So it's gonna try to emulate it a little bit. And here, for example, it's having a little bit of a reverse effect. Um, Make sure that you practice a little bit with this. I recommend that you yeah, just get a cube, do a few cuts, and also maybe make a bottle out of a cylinder using the knife, uh, the knife tool and have some fun, all right? Oh, and yeah, remember to, if you like these videos, uh, it helps me a lot to gather a bit of a following. So remember to like, subscribe, or make a comment if you've got any suggestions on how to improve my videos, or if you've got any questions about anything, remember to comment. And yeah, bye-bye. See you later.